means to some of us that you have to learn how to be the best second in command. Everybody can't have a second in command. Come on, talk to me, somebody. A lot of us still striving to be first in some things that God ain't never called us to be first. Hallelujah, somebody. You have to learn how to be second in command. When you get good at being second in command, you ready for some elevation. Because the one and only true God will never give up his place of being first in everything. And all of us at some point in time are going to have to learn how to be second in command and do it well. Right. Amen, somebody. That ain't what I really came to talk about tonight. In the book of Hebrews, your foundation of scripture, Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 7 and 8, reads these words. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. Somebody say the word of God. Whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be unto God. If you give me a few moments this afternoon, I want to talk to you from the topic or the subject of leadership that's worth following. Can you say that with me? Leadership that's worth following. Leadership that's worth following. This particular pericope of text that we are examining tonight it's really a very familiar passage to those of us that walk in Christendom and have been on the journey in the pastorate for a little while. All right. It causes some challenges for those who are classified as the laity right. in that it gives some moral obligations and instructions for how we are supposed to conduct ourselves as it relates to our leaders. All right. All right. Everybody in the church really don't know how to treat or respond or even interact with the leader. I, I'm going to say it again because I know y'all ain't heard me tonight. Everybody in the church don't really know how to act, how to respond, or how to even interact with the leader that God has placed there. I, I, I remember when I first got in ministry, deacons would tell me, boy, we voted you in. I ain't got nobody going to pray with me tonight. And since we have voted you in, you ought to listen to us and do what we tell you to do without understanding that God is the one that sets up leadership. Does not matter who voted or if they voted, God is the one that sets up leadership. And if we are going to be the church of the living God, we have to go by what God don't really know how to interact with leadership which causes a problem in the church because everybody wants to be the HNIC and y'all already know that we already got enough chiefs and God need a few more Indians to get the work done God sets up divine leadership to be followed is that right? He sets up leadership to be followed The text gives us certain things that we ought to look at. The Bible says, first of all, contextually, that nobody really knows who wrote the book of Hebrews. Traditionalists say that Paul wrote the book. But there are some who have a little bit more learning than I have that are arguing that it was Barnabas, Paul's companion, who led salvation. Some say that it was Apollos, a great oratorical leader, but whoever wrote the book certainly left us with 
some things that we ought to bear in mind. Especially as it talks about in the 13th chapter where it talks about proper conduct in a lot of the areas of the life of the church. Proper conduct is let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby some have even entertained angels and didn't even know it. Remember those that are in afflictions and bonds as bound with them that we ought to look at them like if not for the grace of God that could have been me. I think the church has forgotten a lot of times that we ain't always been where we are. We ain't always done what we got to do. We ain't always preach like we're preaching. A lot of us ain't always walk like we're walking. We sometimes I'm hearing the writer here comes with 
an admonition to the church. Yeah. He tells them, first of all, remember. remember. Verse 7 says, them that have the rule yes, sir. over you, yeah. who have spoken unto you the word of the living God. Yeah. He says, remember them because this right here is that when you remember the leader, you may remember that they have given you an incorruptible. Yes, sir. I had a prayer in church here. Seed of the living God. Yeah. What are you saying? They have given you the best thing yeah. that money can buy. Yeah. They've given you something that's going to hold you even when you don't know you need to be held. Yeah. Something that's going to deliver you. It's the most valuable possession that you could ever get. If you want to dig all the diamonds out of the diamond mine of Africa, if you want to get all of the gold out of the Yukon territory, Stop 
Jesus from God. All right, now. Go Secondarily, leadership that's worth following is operating. Yes, sir. Not only on the promise of God. All right. But they're operating in the plan of God. Yes, sir. I wish I had a plan, church here. Just because 
because they consult with you does not mean that they abdicate their responsibility or authority to make the last decision. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Now don't pray with me up in here. There ought to be some husbands in here. There are a little consultative. You can ask your wife. I ain't got nobody going to pray with me up in here. You can query your wife and say, honey, give me a little bit of input. And the input may be directly opposed to what you want to do. But at the end of the day, I reserve the right as the man of my house, as the priest of my household, to say, I love you, baby, but we going that way. Inspire. Yes. Yeah. 
did that word fall? Ought to be three things. I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> too hard. So listen, number one, he got to be approachable. I'm just going to give you a little quick, and I got to get out of here. Because Jesus says, suffer the little children All right. to come unto me, and forbid them not. All right. For such is of the kingdom of God. Right. A man of God, yeah. who's got the vision of God, yeah. needs to be approachable, number one. Yeah. Oh, you ought to be able to walk up on it. Right. Right. Oh, I'm going to talk to somebody here. Right. I know everybody got their arm of bears. Right. in order to get to where you need to be, yes, to wear that crown that they were singing about. Yes, You've got to go where Jesus went. Yes, Do what Jesus did. Yes, Say what Jesus said. Yes, Walk like he walked. Yes, and go through. Yes, I said go through yes, what he went through. Yes, Somewhere in Philippians, y'all check me out when you get time. All right. It said that we must know him yes, sir. in the power yes, sir. of his resurrection. Yes, sir. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Yes, sir. And in the fellowship yes, sir. of his suffering. Yes, sir. If you're going to be anointed by God, yes, can I help somebody here tonight? Yes, you won't have to go to Gethsemane. Yes, sir. Ooh, I wish I had somebody to try. You know what you're going to thank God has walked up in there. Yes. And you're going to be saying to the Father, Father, accept it be possible. And don't want nobody to follow you. And ain't nobody fighting you. Because you see things that they don't even yet even understand. You won't go to the Father and say, Father, I shouldn't have to go through all of this right here. And the Father is going to say, yet for a little while, my son, just stay right there. And I'm going to send you some angels. 
Yeah. 